Uh, do, uh, Sarah, Sarah, do you want to lead us off today? Yeah, sure. Um, so for both of you guys, just what was it like when you first found out the news that the season was canceled? Well, I mean, it definitely took my breath away. Um, I just sat and had a range of emotions, you know, just just all sorts of different confused and overwhelmed and um, upset because, you know, having the 2020 season just abruptly end like it did, um, it's, it's a tough pill to swallow for, uh, you know, players and for coaches. But um, once I came home and was with my family after the season was um, officially canceled, I just kind of sat back and had a different perspective um, on things. Because with what's going on in the world and our country, um, it's tough. You know, it's people's lives and it's uh, people's health that we're talking about. And it really just puts. I would agree with that. I'll just say something real quick. Um, I think most of all, I was just shocked because I guess I just didn't ever imagine it to happen as fast as it did. Because it's like, you know, we found out that we were going to play without fans. And then we found out that season was going to be suspended for a while. And then all of a sudden season was just done. And honestly, I didn't have time to even uh, put into perspective the first thing that happened. And then I was shocked that the next thing happened. And then it was just like, it just kept getting worse and worse. And to be honest, I don't know if it's, <laughs> it's still at this point, if it, you know, has really sank in that incredible, um, you know, here with the NCAA's decision, and, you know, just sitting and reading all of this stuff, you know, you want eligibility as a senior, but you want eligibility for all Division One athletes. You know, as a senior, you don't want to see your season end the way that it did, but you also don't want to see your teammates and other athletes only have three years of eligibility. Um, so I think the decision that they made to grant everyone the extra year of eligibility is huge. It's huge for everyone that plays sports, um, and just getting that year back, um, you know, I would have been personally devastated if the decision would have, you know, been to not give anyone eligibility. Um, so I think it's great. I think they made the right decision. And then Braxton, kind of same question to you. What do you think? Yeah, I think it was definitely the right decision. <clears throat> I don't think anyone wants to see, especially seniors, you know, see their season come to an end. But I think it's big for everyone because, you know, you only get four – four years to try to break records you only get four years to try to win a championship and I think seeing that cut down to three for freshmen <clears throat> or for anyone in that matter is just really disappointing and so I think um, it was 100% the right decision for seniors especially because nobody wants to see their season in like that you know you want to <clears throat> be able to end season on your own terms with your team the way that you want it to be you know and actually have some say in that but uh, I think that they, they made the right decision, and I think everyone is, is really happy with the decision that they made. All right. Thanks, Sydney and Braxton. Thank you. Chip? Hey, uh, yeah. Hey, Sydney, this is Chip Souza with the – Muted. Um, so being a senior, will you return next year? I think the most important thing – You might – you would do. Um, to be honest, I have not put much thought into it because I'm trying to take it day by day. Uh, next, This next year would be my fifth year, and then that extra year of eligibility would be my sixth year. So, you know, that's a decision that I don't have to make right now. That's a decision I'm just going to, you know, kind of let come to me. Uh, I think if I made that decision right now, I'm just kind of trying to see too far into the future. You know, I don't know how next year is going to go. You know, I'm just trying to take it day by day and not get too ahead of myself um, and just try to enjoy it while I can, you know, after my fifth year, if, if I want to go ahead and um, extend my career into that sixth year, then I will most certainly do it. Um, I'm just not, I don't know. I'm not going to make the decision yet. Um, I'm already in grad school. So I'm just trying to, you know, stick with my school and um, get through this fifth year. And then honestly, I'm just, I'm just going to uh, see where the decision takes me and see how, see how I'm feeling. Sydney, um, you know, I think it was you, it might have been Braxton, I don't remember which one said this, uh, you know, being at home um, in March and April with it being 70 degrees outside, but what, what are you kind of doing to, to occupy your time? I mean, you know, as an athlete, I know you can't just be 
I know you're not just sitting in the house watching TV. What, what are you doing <laughs> to occupy your time? Well, I mean, you know, Braxton and I both said it. It It is terrible sitting at home during this time because for as long as I can think back, I would be playing football during this time. And, you know, right now we're supposed to be putting on our uniforms, taking on um, Tulsa in a midweek game, and to not be out on the field and to not be competing with my team and against another team, it's heartbreaking. It's, you know, it's not fun to think about. But right now I am trying to stick with my routine um, and to better myself every single day. I do an at-home workout, um, a lot of running and speed work, still trying to hit hard and grind for whenever, you know, the next practice is to come in the future um, so that I'm, you know, well-prepared and, and staying in great softball shape. What about you, Braxton? <clears throat> yeah, I'm pretty much doing the same. Uh, just trying to stay, I guess, in a routine. Um, to be honest, it's weird that I'm home and not playing softball and then I'm still in school so it's like I'm trying to stay in a routine of getting up doing some school work um just like I said I'm working out every day spending time with my family because this is time that I don't usually get to see my family a whole lot I have younger sisters that I'm spending time with and um so I'm really taking advantage of that time and um just kind of relaxing enjoying being at home while I'm here and uh, just trying to stay in a routine because, like you said, I absolutely hate being inside with nothing to do. So while the weather's nice, I'm trying to get outside and um, just take advantage of this time, you know, that we're given that we don't usually get at this time of year. Thank you. And I want to add, add one more thing to what Braxton said. Sure. Um, in addition to that, I, too, am really enjoying this time. Nate. Uh, Braxton, first since you had to redshirt uh, when you mm -hmm. transferred, just how important? It's, I don't know, it's very motivating, I guess, whenever you have to sit out a year and then, you know, you're working, you're working, you're working, and you come back. And then, like, to have this season just ripped away is like, oh, my gosh. Like, I'm trying my best just to play softball with the Arkansas Razorbacks. And it, like, has not been meant to be, I guess, for the past two years. Um but, yeah, I guess for anyone redshirting, you know, it's so important to just stay within the game, stay within yourself, um, you know, work on the things you need to work on, uh, stay with it, don't get too far away from it, because it's very, it's very easy, you know, to kind of get distracted while you're not able to play and while you're away from the game, which last year was a little bit different because I was always, you know, with my teammates. I was always at the game. <laughs> uh, your decision to leave at the first to go to Missouri. And then the beginning of my sophomore year at Columbia, our head coach got fired. And, I mean, he was a big, big reason of why I went there. I learned so much from him. And um, I really just developed as a player um, playing under underneath the head coach at Missouri. And whenever he got fired, it just kind of um, – everything kind of changed. And so after my sophomore year, um, this is where I want to go. Um, it was a one day thing. I kind of talked to my parents. They knew this is where I wanted to go. And after the visit, I mean, there were no questions. Um, the coaching staff was great. And um, we kind of met in Coach Stoffel's office. And I just told them, I was like, this is, this is where I want to be. I know this is where I want to be. And um, I'm just so grateful that I got the opportunity to be a Razorback. Thank you. Where that stands as of now, um, I don't personally think that playing professionally was an option for me. Um, as I graduated, I was going to enter into the work, you know, world. But I, I'm, I'm not sure. I don't know what is transpiring with um, the women's professional softball league, and you know, with everything going on with the the Olympics as well. I think that plays a part into every day before practice, where we like say a quote. <clears throat> And uh, we've kind of kept that going through our group me. Uh, we'll pass a quote to someone, and they will video themselves telling the team the quote and why it's kind of relevant to our team. And then we also do um, daily gratitude. So Coach Chapel will pick three or four of us to kind of tell the team what we're thankful for that day. And so we'll video ourselves and send it in the group me. And um, it just kind of keeps us, you know, keeps a positive attitude and not taking anything for granted and always remembering, you know, what we're thankful for. And then we have a team Snapchat. So we're constantly keeping, you know, each other updated on how our quarantine life is going and kind of what we're doing. And we're just a really fun loving group. So um, we definitely don't have any trouble staying in touch. And then we're going to have our first Zoom call this Friday. 
so that's kind of exciting because we'll get to see everybody's faces and talk and you know keep everybody updated on how we're doing and um, I think one of the most important things that we're doing right now is making sure we stay in touch you know we don't want to get too distant in this weird uh, time that we're in and so the coaching staff doing a really good job of keeping us connected uh, with the group me and the videos that we're doing and all that so it's been pretty cool to see. I appreciate it. Network and how they work and do their jobs and are on air. And um, my most favorite memories were getting to stay up late um, and work the night shift with helping the community. That's one thing that I absolutely love to flourish in is community engagement and giving back to those is created and so with those three internships I fully feel like I have set myself up for success you know when my softball career is over what is it uh, you know what kind of field do you want to get in have you have you thought about that much and also having been in New York when it was hustle and bustle can you imagine the way it is right now with uh, with the stay at home thing up there Yes, um, so I am getting my degree in journalism. I aspire to be a sideline reporter. Um, I would love to do in-color commentating for softball. I, I kind of want to stick more on the baseball soft summers. Um, my freshman year after playing, I didn't know what I was going to get. I was still pretty young. I'm um, in the moving to a big city like that. You know, I'm from Arkansas. That's not what I'm accustomed to. And then getting there, it is an incredible place um there is just so much opportunity and so many things to do and to adventure i absolutely loved living there for two summers you know there's you know kind of this persona of how the people are there and every person i came in contact with and created a relationship with was nothing but amazing and so extremely helpful and pleasant um but yeah with what's going on there right now just turning on the news and seeing what those people are having to deal with, you know, it's kind of, it's upsetting and heartbreaking because there's a piece of me that, you know, I'm attached to New York and, you know. Decision of whether or not you're going to come back and play again next year. Uh, you know, you know, if things were still standing where we were playing in our season and um, I was to, you know, finish that last game in June, um, you know, yes, I've, I've been applying for jobs. I have, a handful of opportunities but you know right now with everything that has transpired that's you know at the end of it from the job market and the people that I you know were interviewing with and have been in contact with I don't know where they are headed and how you know all of this is going to affect um, they as companies and businesses so you know right now everything for me is at a halt um, and I'm just going to move forward. Um, and, again, I'm super excited to get feedback from Coach Stifel and Hunter Yerchuk because they are such extremely incredible leaders, and they always do um, what's best for their student athletes. So, again, I'm really excited to see what transpires with um, the NCAA's decision and especially being a senior. I appreciate it. Thank you. Bob? Hey, how, how you guys doing today? Appreciate you. And I mean, I was so excited to get out there. I was telling, uh, you know, people before season started, I was like, I feel like a 10-year-old girl again, you know, just so excited that season's finally here and ready to get out there and play after sitting out a year. And to have it just taken away so fast was like, oh, my gosh, what is happening, you know? Um, it's just, I don't know, as Ann, um, you know, trying not to get too frustrated with it because, you know, that's not going to do anything for me. So just staying patient and um, doing the work right now while I can. And, you know, hopefully next year <laughs> everything's going to gonna work out for the best and season will come around. And, um, you know, I guess the anticipation just keeps going, you know, fulfilling over until uh, next year, and I will be just excited, you know, next year to start playing as I as I was this year. And, and um, yeah, so it's going good. Okay, and then um, a question. Just, you know, a joy to be around, and, you know, we all look up to her. And, and so if, 
if you decide to come back, I guess, would you go for a master's or would you just kind of take enough questions? I move on from school and softball. And you, you mentioned, you know, what's going on in New York, it's especially heartbreaking since you, you know, live there. Um, did, when you were there, like, did you live in, you know, New Jersey or do you have roommates in Manhattan? Or what, what part of New York did you live in? <laughs> Um, the very the first summer that I interned at the Major League Baseball Network, um, the network is actually in Secaucus, New Jersey. I live um, right on the um, river, um, right across from the Statue of Liberty. It was a beautiful location. I lived by myself um, in high-rise apartments um, that I was fortunate enough that, you know, I was put in. And then um, by my mom. And then with the Mets, I actually lived in Queens. Um, and it was a new and different experience, um, but I'm so glad that I lived in an area like that because I was able to, you know, just be around different cultures and different people and interact with, you know, people that I usually don't interact with, and it was, uh, it was a great experience. Um, do, do you, have, you, have you been staying in touch with any of your acquaintances or friends in New York and um, do you know anybody maybe that's been having to deal with the virus? I guess everybody's dealing with it, but I mean, do you know anybody that's been directly affected by it? Um, so I do stay in contact with the people that I interned with and that I worked for. Um, I haven't had any direct contact, but Donovan Mitchell, who plays for the Utah Jazz, I worked for his dad um, at the Met. His name is Donovan. And um, I worked for his dad. Um, and so, you know, Donovan Mitchell, he, you know, tested positive for the virus. Um, but, no, I haven't contacted his dad about it. Um, I'm sure they're having to deal with a lot as a family. Yeah. And then um, I don't know, help this into off the wall question. Uh, for both of you all, what, what do you think of the job the grounds crew does at the softball field, keep it in good, good shape for you guys with? Look, the plane surface there. Our, um, you want to go first, Braxton, and then I can bounce off of you. Okay. Uh, our ground crew is amazing. Uh, um, I think that's something that some people might take for granted, but I do not take a second of that for granted because I have played on some surfaces that are not that great, and um, it's not fun on the infield when the surface is not great. And you get a screaming ground ball hit at you, and you feel like your face is going to get taken off. So um, I love Austin and the ground crew. They're great. They put a lot of time and effort in our field to make it look so great. Um, the infield is always a great surface. I can't speak as much for the outfield. Tiff Park can do that because I'm not out there very often. But uh, It's amazing. The infield. <laughs> <laughs> I know it always looks great. The grass is so green. It's so pretty. Um, but, yeah, the infield's great, and I'm very, very, very thankful for all the work that they do. Um, you know, I never take that for granted because that's a large part, you know, of our field and um, the game that's being played. So, yeah, they're they're absolutely great. And just to bounce off of what Braxton said, um, I agree 100%. And Austin is just such a huge part of our program. You know, like Braxton said, field crew people, they could probably be taken for granted other places, but we do not take Austin for granted. He is such a huge part, again, of our program, um, you know, as he does his job, but also just as a person. He's so extremely passionate about what he does and about we girls and our team. You know, he is an integral part of what we do. And just getting to interact with him, um, you know, he's there from like sun up to sun down. He works so extremely hard and is passionate, again, about what he does. Um, and, you know, he has been impactful in all of our lives as well, just like a coach or someone on the staff or a player would be. So we're really fortunate to have Austin. I guess they're they're keeping you know, whether it's baseball, softball, probably that keep the the field in good shape year round. I mean, like I assume there's somebody out there, you know, during this time making sure it's taken care of. Do you do you appreciate the fact that they're out there even though no games are going on? Like maybe Sydney, you could take that. Yes, very much so. Um, Austin always does a great job of keeping us up to date and. I mean, even when we're not there over Christmas break or Thanksgiving break and we're not playing games, he's out there, I mean, grinding on the field to 
you know, make the surface great on the infield, make the outfield great. Um, and he just, yeah, I mean, right now, I'm sure he's still out there, which he is, um, you know, putting a lot of work out on that field. So whenever we're ready to go this fall, you know, it's in good shape. Um, and, you know, that just means a lot. It's, it's like anything else in life, just taking pride in what you do. It goes a long way. And he does that. And, you know, we are all just so grateful that, you know, he does what he does and he's great at his job and um, is a part of our lives. Okay. Thanks. Well, you guys are so uh, optimistic. It makes me feel better. Just, uh, just listen to you. <laughs> so thanks. <laughs> Tom, um, Tom, you there? Yeah, I'm here. I'm, I was unmuting my mic. Hey, this question's from. And by the way, appreciate you guys coming on with us for a few minutes. Um, Braxton, assuming you were in Paragould, uh, what was the tornado situation like for you the other day? Did you guys have to shelter? And do you have any personal, you know, accounts of things that happened with that? Um, yeah, it was a little too close for comfort. I'm not going to lie. I was, uh, that's probably the most scared I've ever been in a tornado situation. Uh, we were actually at a friend's house and wound up having to go, uh, to my boyfriend's grandma's house. And, uh, it was pretty scary because it was, you know, it was heading our way and it's probably Jonesville's no more than 15 minutes from where I'm from, where I'm from. And it absolutely destroy Jonesboro and so it was pretty scary um there are actually debris everywhere at my house in Paragould there's debris all over Paragould um and it probably was a good 10 miles from my house and to think that debris was taken all the way to my house I think just kind of accounts for how strong it was um and uh, going off of what I said earlier we do a daily gratitude you know that we kind of send in our group and that was, you know, my thankful for. I'm just thankful for my house and the roof over my head because not everyone was. In okay, and then briefly for both of you guys, please. Uh, you guys had won your conference opener at Bama, and I'm just wondering what you thought the projection, the the season would project to for you guys. What, where were you guys headed? Would you start with that, Sydney, please? Yeah, um, we started talking about it um, back in the fall, and just to hit on something really quickly. You know, softball, and as it is for other spring sports, I mean, we we grind in the fall. It is, you know, team practices, individuals, um, you know, obviously under the time um, restrictions with workouts. But we had been saying it from the fall that this team it was, it was so incredibly special. Um, you know, out of my four years, we this team this year was so united. Um, we, you know, just – really really strive to do you know our very best for the state and for the program and for each other um and you know we were really excited to see where we would end up um you know throughout the season and especially at the end that was seen in that one to nothing win that we had our identity and then finally finding our identity and then you know um going on to, to win that first game at Bama and just starting conference season and really just just uh, starting to showcase what we had in us. And then for the season to come to an end, you know, it was very sad. And like Sid said, there will always be that question mark. But, um, you know, just um, knowing that, that we were fighting in a positive direction and this next year will be nothing but, you know, feeding off of that. We're just going to continue to ride.